And which artists were your inspiration when you were growing up? One of the most amazing things about making the second album was probably Nitin Sawney was my one of my biggest influences, if not the biggest, and being able to make a record with him was a real, real honour. And is there anyone you compare yourself to now? I wouldn't really say I compare myself to anyone. I think, you know, I can see Kindred Spirits and I can see other artists that I fit with musically, but I think, you know, it's best to kind of leave the comparisons up to other people and just kind of do your own thing. And you were... Uh... You guested on Hollyoaks in March mm. this year. Um, I have to ask, who was the best looking out of the girls on the on the stage on the uh, show? Do you know what? We didn't really see many of the girls on the show. I mean, I was more. This is the weird thing as well. I was more excited about meeting Jack Osborne. You know, getting my photo taken with Big Jack was. Yeah. You know, it, was a, it was a lifelong dream to be honest with you. So to be able to have that hanging on my wall is a is a real, uh, really exciting, really exciting moment. Do they serve real pints in the dog? We didn't even get to go to the dog. We spent most of the time at the student union where they're drinking, uh, they're just drinking apple juice. And uh, if it shattered some illusions, to be honest, it was so small. <laughs> like everything's shot on wide angle. You kind of we're walking down the like the Hollyoaks village, and you realise how tiny everything was. It's quite bizarre. Now you're said to be well known for your debating. Um, mm. You've been described as a political preacher by some. Do you think this is fair? I think I've got a few political songs, and if people ask me what my opinions are, I'm not going to shy away from them. But I, I think, you know, I don't mind people calling me that. It's just when you get dismissed as that, I think, is unfair. I think, you know, one of the things that you've got to do is you've got to be true to yourself. And, you know, the things that I talk about, in particular, love music, hate racism, you know, they're all things that are, you know, incredibly important to me and are things that I don't think, you know, are really that, you know, alien concepts. I find it funny that I get, you know, called a political preacher when most of the time I'm just really talking about you know, an archaic, outdated you know, concept, you know, racism that should have been dismissed years and years ago. And yet, you know, by, by doing that, you get, you get called a politician. I think it's a bit stupid, to be honest. Now, you're particularly well known for your, um, your stance against the BNP. Yeah. Um, obviously, with today being election day. Um, yeah. Just sum up for me um, why people out voting today um, should, in your opinion, avoid voting for that political party. I think if you are going to vote for the BNP, which I hope you don't, you've really got to understand what you're voting for. I think, you know, the leaflets that you get through the door from the British National Party and, you know, the propaganda that you see on their website is only one avenue of what is essentially, you know, they, when they, they, their stance on immigration, when you read it written down, doesn't seem, you know, too alien a concept. And then you really start reading into, you know, what they're talking about and you watch the interviews and you realise that they're a party that are very much institutionally racist you know, they're a party that, what you know, that openly said you know that they want to see you know British people reclaim Britain, and yet Britishness is such a, uh, a strange concept because you know Britain really is a, a nation made up of immigrants. You know, always has been, and probably always will be. I think it's important to understand that by voting for the British National Party, you're giving you know people with far right and fascist and racist views, you know, a voice in a, a political. A field where you know they don't really deserve to have a voice. Do you think that, um, as a talented musician uh, that you are, that the, uh, the the music has given you a gateway into tackling some of the subjects that you raise? I think it's. I mean, it's been amazing to be able to, you know, put my voice behind a campaign such as Love Music Hate Racism. We did an amazing show in Victoria Park uh, on Sunday, a hundred thousand people, you know, celebrating diversity, celebrating. You know, celebrating music, but also just coming together and unified and standing and saying, you know what, we need to kick racism out of our society. You know, it was, you know, there was definitely undertones against fighting for the BNP, but more than anything, it was a celebration of, you know, of being together and being one people. And, you know, I think as being in a band, to be able to do that is amazing. I think, you know, I'd probably be doing the same thing. I'd probably be talking about the same thing, regardless of, you know, whether I had a platform or not. But, it's, you know, it's nice to be able to have that platform to talk now, as someone who's part Burmese as well, um, mm. presumably you have particularly strong feelings about the situation out there at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think... Do you want to elaborate? I mean, the thing with um, the Burmese thing is very difficult because, you know, it's, it blew up again, you know, since you know since I was alive. It's the first time that it's really become prominent in, in the news. I mean, it's... Aung San Suu Kyi's been under house arrest for just over 20 years now, and, mm. you know, the people are very placid and... You know, very mellow, and they're getting beaten, and they're getting put under house arrest, and they're getting mistreated, and yet they start, sit back and they take it. You know, it's not yeah. within their culture to fight back. And I think what's in, you know what's incredibly important really is that 
pressure is put on, you know, on the regime to, you know, to, to kind of be, you know, to allow democracy to thrive in Burma because, you know, I, I can't really understand how it's gone on so long. And, it, you know, it's very, it's very difficult for me as, you know, somebody who's never been to Burma to understand what, the Burmese, you know, understand what the Burmese people are going through. But, you know, just what you see and what you read and the people that I've spoken to, you realise how horrific it is. And yet, you know, nothing really, even though it blew up in the media and you see monks getting beaten, you, you know, you see people in sit-down, silent, peaceful protests, you know, getting moved on quite abruptly and with such force. And yet, you know, the world kind of sits back and does nothing. It's a real shame. And you also went to uh, to Liverpool a couple of months ago for the Africa Express. Yep. Um, what did that involve? The Africa Express. I mean, it's it's quite difficult to explain, and, but it's essentially about 100, 120 musicians. You know, some from Africa, some from America, some from Canada, many from the UK, just getting together in a in a room with a seven hour time slot and pretty much no plan. We all got the train up in the morning. Um, meeting each other and people are just kind of forming relationships deciding to get together and jam and yeah it's a real cream of african music you know you had amadou and Miriam and rashid taha you know two real leading lights of you know of african music and mali music in particular being able to play against you know play with people like you know damon alban right the way through to the magic numbers you know had a real diversity of uh, different types of music and what happened was amazing you know it was real one-off event you know and that's what i love about the various africa express projects i've been involved with you know it's a a, pe- a collection of people coming together and having an amazing experience that cannot be recreated and yet you know every time they do a new event it's equally fantastic but yet so different from the from the last and just a couple of quick questions about yourself um if you could only have one song on your ipod what would it be that's tricky um Either um, Rolodex Propaganda by At The Drive-In yeah. or um, Waiting For The Great Leap Forward by Billy Bragg. Also, if there was any one law you could pass, what would, what would that be? Any one law? And I'm putting you on the spot here a little <laughs> that's bit. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tricky one. I would... Um, I probably wouldn't be one law, but I'd um, really look at the way that people... Um, look at freedom of speech i think you know that with freedom of speech comes great responsibility and i would look at um the race relations act and you know be able to you know persecute groups uh, successfully like the british national party that say the things they do because they managed to you know in the court case they managed to slip out and yet what they were saying was was you know was a breach of that act and it was racist and yet you know there's loopholes i'd tighten it up so rather than it just being there having bureaucracy for the sake of bureaucracy actually being able to persecute people for saying racist and prejudicial things and finally with the uh, the heavy schedule that you've got coming up are you um are you going to have a bit of a chance to get away at any point go on holiday i mean i'm i'm having a great time i mean this it's kind of heavy schedule as I'm doing something every day, but I'm doing what I love, so it doesn't really feel... I mean, I don't really want to take a holiday, to be honest. I love I love playing gigs, I love making music, so... You know, take. I mean, when I, if I, you know, when I find when I go away on holiday, you know, after about four days, I start getting itchy fingers and want to be back. So I might go away for a weekend and just chill out, but, prob, you know, probably just carry on doing this all summer. I'm loving it. Sam, thanks very much indeed for your time. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Take it easy.